cousin Eve was a senior now, but although I am three years older than she is, I was just a lowly junior. I'd been out sick for a long time, and then I'd gone to junior college. This real campus seemed wonderful to me, and it was such fun being with Eve again. Naturally, she had to show me around and try to bring me up to date. I was amazed that she wasn't engaged by now. She was prettier than ever. The number ones are good. Let's have two of those, please. Make my number three, if you don't mind. I don't see how you can eat so much so early in the morning. Are you on a diet by any chance? Of course I am, and you should be too. Every morning I exercise for 10 minutes. You can start right in tomorrow. <laughs> Look, let's get this straight right now. You starve and you exercise. I eat and I watch you exercise. But it's really as necessary for you as for everybody else. Oh, cut it out. I wondered why Eve and I seemed different now. And I ended up by deciding that she was still the same attractive Eve, full of life, but a little self-centered and a little apt to push people around. I liked her as much as ever, but I wasn't so easy to push anymore. I didn't feel I needed her advice. Still, I, I didn't really resent it. Maybe it was that course in family relations last spring. I learned that it's a good idea to try to change yourself first if there has to be a change. Changing somebody else is practically impossible. Yet I must admit I was curious to know all about Eve, and she was more than willing to talk. Tell me about the boys you've met. You were saying something always happened. Well, whenever I meet a boy, I start asking myself, is he right for me? And I don't know, Mary, I really don't know. There was one you wrote about, his name was Alex, I think. Why did that fall through? That's just it, Mary, I don't know. I can't for the life of me figure out what happened. Take Alex, for instance, she said. I was down at Riley's one afternoon with the gang. I'd heard of him, but I'd never met him. He was a football star. I liked him, and he liked me right from the start. We found plenty to talk about, and neither one of us could figure out how we'd been on the campus for two years without ever meeting before. He was lots of fun. We decided to spend the afternoon together. It turned out that was just the first of a whole slew of afternoons. He was really sweet and, oh well, just nice to be with. I guess I was a little proud too that a varsity football player was paying so much attention to little me. Well, as I said, Eve went on, we saw quite a bit of each other. But after a few months, his popularity got annoying. We were never really alone. And he never stopped worrying about his appearance. Did his collar look better buttoned or unbuttoned? Well, I could have been wearing a little number by Dior, and he wouldn't have noticed it. But if there was a new girl in the place, he was all eyes and smiles. It wouldn't make any difference what she looked like as long as she had some simpering crack to make about how well he'd played on Saturday. I began to catch on that those forward passes could be used two ways. And finally, I had more than I could stand, and I told him exactly what I thought of him. He didn't take it as well as he took compliments. Said I didn't appreciate the importance of his career. Career, indeed. Who ever heard of a wolf with a career? And then there was Arthur. Arthur was different, awfully nice, but awfully different. The gang called him the brain because he was such a whiz at math. And he was always ready to help a friend. You're different from other girls. That's what you think. You're smarter. You're almost like a man. Oh, no, I'm very much the woman. I don't think of you that way at all. I don't get you at all. I know. You think math is exciting, but you really ought to get yourself straightened out. You'd be surprised how many things are just as exciting as math. Now, really, you don't think there's anything wrong with me. Oh, forget it. I've got to go now. We'll talk about it some other time. But there never was another time, said Eve. I was just another problem to him.
and then there was Steve. Steve was Eve's boyfriend for a whole spring term. He was cute, she said, and really romantic. He had his own workshop where he made boats and things. Eve used to come by to pick him up after her classes were over. Come on, Steve, they're waiting for you. Oh, I don't know, Eve. Why can't we just hang around here for a while today? You can help me paint and we can listen to some good music. It'll be fun. Is that your idea of fun? I want to be with people. Oh. What's wrong with that, Steve? Nothing. Oh, come on, you'll have a good time. Hurry up and get on your shore. He never wanted to leave that old carpenter's shop. I tried to get him out once in a while, really I did. You know, Eve, you can't make a man over like you do a room. But Mary, don't you see what Steve needs is not you, but somebody else. You know what? I bet you'd like him. Say, that's a terrific idea. Come on, we'll go over there right now. Right now? Sure. I thought it might be good to see some of these boys for myself. Besides, Steve sounded nice. And I thought I'd better begin to make some friends on the campus. Sure enough, we found him at the old stand, lost in thought and a pleasant job. It didn't take long to get the introductions over. Steve asked us in. It seemed like a nice place with a real atmosphere of its own, but evidently not one that Eve liked especially. But Eve is like that, jumpy, full of energy. She never could sit still for long. I'm different. Like Steve, I find it relaxing to keep away from groups sometimes and work out my troubles with my hands. Steve and I got along well together, though I could see he wondered how a friend of Eve's could be like me. He'd been thinking there was something wrong with him because he couldn't dance to Eve's fidgety tune. As a matter of fact, Steve was not the boy for me either, even though I liked him a lot. It would be too much like spending time with a twin brother. We're too much alike. I told all this to Eve the next day when we had a riding date. It was Saturday and the classes were over at noon. Now you see what I mean, Mary? All these boys are nice in their own way. They all have something I like, but it's only one side of their character. But the something Eve liked about a boy can't be separated from the rest of his personality. I couldn't make her understand that, but I did stick my neck out a little way. I think it would do you a lot of good to meet someone you can't push around. You mean someone who pushes me around? No, I don't. I mean someone who's not afraid of you. That's just like John. He thinks he's tough. I can't stand the sight of him. You're sure about that, Eve? Well, here's what happened last week. We drove out to the country together. We had a wonderful time. I can't remember when I've had so much fun. I guess we just clicked. Then, just as we were getting to know each other better, he says, let's go home. Was I mad? Here I was thinking he really cared and he does a thing like that. But why did he do it? Oh, well, you see, it wasn't his car. He promised his friend he'd be back with it before six. Now, look, Eve, you can stay if you want to. I'm not going to keep George waiting. So George is more important to you than I am, is that it? That's not the point. George can do without the car for once. If you really cared about me, you'd stay, George or no George. You wouldn't want me to break a promise, would you? Why not? Well, I won't. I'm not going to let George down, even for you. You'll start sprouting wings if you don't watch out. Move over, boss. You're so inconsiderate. Look who's talking. Why, someone ought to take you across his knee and give you a good spanking. Might make you more human. Maybe you're the one to do it. Maybe, but I doubt it.
He sounds like the best of all. Are you serious? Why? You know you were wrong. How do you make that out? Well, just think about it for a second. What were you asking him to do? Prove that he liked me? What's wrong with that? That would never satisfy you. Why not? Well, that's not what you really wanted. Well, what was it then? You wanted him to do what you told him to do. That's what you always want, Eve. That's terrible. I thought I'd gone too far. But now that she knew what she was doing, she could decide for herself if she wanted to change. That's always the hard thing to learn. That if any change is possible, it must be changing yourself. You have to take other people as they come, or else leave them alone. I started thinking about Eve's boys. They had the same problem. Steve liked Eve, and he liked his hobby, too. But he couldn't have both. It would be easier to find a girl who likes staying at home. While Arthur probably needs some help in order to change. Alex had already solved his problem. A girl who isn't always competing with him for first place. She's not as attractive as Eve, but she thinks it's wonderful that he's so wonderful. She's right for him. And John? Well, boy meets girl, boy loses girl. Maybe boy knows what he wants and on what terms. This girl doesn't know yet, but she's doing her best to find out. Every little experience, even the unpleasant ones, helps me know a little more about myself. And that's the first step. There are some things about me that I can't change. And those are the things that some man will have to live with for the rest of his life. So I'll pick him with those things in mind. I hope he'll do the same for me. We'll have to stay friends for a long, long time.